Canada is well known for its high cost of living, especially if you're living in any of the major cities. But a recent trend started with people moving to Calgary for a lower cost of living. In this video, we'll break down how much cheaper it really is to live in Calgary, if anything. With actual numbers, Calgarians like myself are paying every single month. When it comes to cost of living, housing is often the biggest expense for anyone and Calgary is well known for its dynamic housing market. The city has seen big fluctuations in home prices over the last couple years. But we still remain a lot cheaper than major cities like Toronto and Vancouver. The average price of a home to buy currently is about 567700 for safe measures, let's call it 580 to find yourself a detached property within the city limits. Some with even a basement suite you can rent out for potential cash flow while you still live upstairs. Now, to give you some rough numbers, you need a down payment of about $33,000 minimum, which is 5% on first $500,000 and then 10% on balance. So let's say we get an interest rate of 6% at 25 years amortization you're looking at paying right under $3,700 per month for your mortgage. For the same kind of property, if you're looking to rent, you'll be looking at something around $2,500 to $3,500 every single month. Now, if you're looking to just get started with a one bedroom or a two bedroom for a, let's say, purchase price of $200,000, you only really need $10,000 down payment. And again, with 6% interest rate, you're looking at a monthly payment of just under $1,300 per month, $1,264 to be exact. And for whatever reason, if you're in the market looking to buy or sell, give me a call, let's talk. Talking about the rental market, Calgary still remains a lot affordable than major cities like Toronto and Vancouver. On average, you'll find a one or two bedroom place to rent for $15,000 to $2,000 per month, and even basement suites for under $1,000. And perhaps if you're okay moving to older communities or a little bit out of city, you'll find yourself something even cheaper. Now, if you're a homeowner, you definitely have your utilities on the side. And nowadays, even tenants are sharing utilities, sometimes 40% if you're living in the basement or 60% if you're living on the upper floor or even 100% if you have the entire house to yourself. And this is where the numbers will look a lot different depending on the space, usage and even efficiency. But let's look at my utility bills to give you a very rough idea. So you can have different energy providers. I'm going by NMEX right now and here's my electricity bill nicely broken down. 129 is the total I'm looking at for this month. Now my property is nothing small or nothing big. It's a very average size home in Calgary. And you can see the chart here which kind of gives you a very rough idea of what I pay on a monthly basis. So very consistent, very close to that 129 kind of mark. Natural gas, this is where the numbers do look very different. So only $72. But if you go into the winter months, you'll see the chart kind of peaks quite a lot. Moving forward, this is what I pay for water treatment. So if you're not aware, most of our tap water comes from the Bow River and it's filtered through the same level of quality before we put it back into the rivers. So this is what takes care of that. And of course, small little charges, including my garbage, waste and recycling every month. Brings my total right about 355 for this month. And of course, your utility bills could look a lot different depending on your space. But typically we see condos paying about something similar, if not a little bit more because they are taking care of your maintenance, like your lawn care, snow removal, and anything extra that's also going into the reserve funds. So for an average home, let's say you'll be looking at paying about 300 to 400 per month for utilities. Next up, transportation. Calgary has great public transportation that's now starting to be interconnected with other small towns outside of Calgary's city limits. And if you're living in downtown, we have the world's biggest indoor walkway system. But regardless, Calgary is a driving city, especially in the long run. But if you're a student or have kids that might rely on public transportation, you'll be looking at spending a little over $80 for a youth pass and about $112 for an adult bus pass every month. And for drivers like myself, typically we end up spending anywhere from $150 to $250 per month just on gas. And if you are aware of the carbon taxes here in Canada, they are pretty high. 
making our gas prices a lot higher than what it used to be. As of this video, our gas prices are sitting at $1.45 per liter. When it comes to groceries, Calgary has a wide variety of places to shop from big supermarkets to farmer markets. And if you are coming from an Eastern background, you'll be surprised how much of your cultural food outside of bread and butter you can find in your everyday supermarkets. If you enjoy dining out often, you'll typically spend $30 to $40 per person. Now, I'm not a huge believer in dining out myself, but Calgary does have some great restaurants for yourself and even some family dining places. And once again, you'll be surprised with the variety of options available from South Asian, African, Mexican, and almost any kind of restaurant you can think of. Canada is well known for free healthcare. Now it's important to understand seeing a doctor and visiting certain specialists might be covered by the government, but these are still services we are paying for by our taxes. It's also important to understand there are certain things like medicines that are being paid out of pocket. For those working under employer, almost all of these would be covered by your medical coverage, by your employer's policy which tend to vary from companies to companies. Some will cover you almost for the entire amount and some will only cover 70 to 80%. So let's say you bought a medicine for $100. You might only have to pay 10 to $20 out of pocket. If you're self-employed or an entrepreneur, this is where things get a little complicated. You might have to pay out for the entire purchase or you might have to buy a private insurance policy, which again will typically cover you like an employer's policy would. But this case, you have to pay every single month a premium of $100 to $400 a month, depending if you want certain things included or not, like dental, chiro, physio, and all that extra kind of stuff. For schooling, Calgary offers a wide range of public and private schools. I find the public schools to be just as good as the private ones. And schools rarely cost you anything. Sometimes students only really have to pay for their supply every year, which is less than $100 for the public schools. And depending on your income, most Canadians do not have a very high cost of education for public schools. So these schools cover you from elementary all the way till grade 12. Anything post-secondary like universities, colleges, would cost you thirty to fifty thousand dollars for a degree, and typically forty to sixty thousand for international students. In most typical colleges, you're considered a full-time student if you're studying more than three courses every semester. Each semester would have its own different costs associated, but typical cost is about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per semester for per course. And depending on your program and your school of choice, of course, these costs can vary, but just take my numbers as a very rough guideline. Beyond the numbers, Calgary offers an excellent quality of life, lots of security, and a huge potential for growth. Calgary is committed for green spaces, active communities, and beautiful cultural events and parks not only within the city, but national parks that are world famous like Banff, Jasper, Kenmore. Typically, enjoying yourself out and about is not going to break the bank. It will only really cost you an hour drive to go to the mountains and enjoy yourself in winter and even in summertime. I would roughly put an average cost of $100 to $150 for every time you make a trip to the mountains and drive back the same day. For hotel stays or weekends at the mountains, you can call yourself short of about three to $500 depending on how you plan your trip and how you plan your weekend. In conclusion, while cost of living in Calgary can vary depending on your lifestyle and family size, it's generally more affordable than some of the major cities here in Canada with growing economy, job opportunities, and high quality of life. Calgary can be your next home. If you're planning to buy or invest in Calgary, make sure to subscribe and I'm always here to help. Once again, my name is Mohit and I'll see you in the next one.